I want to tell you, many criminals are going to turn to Jesus Christ. And those people who are doing bad things are going to change by the love of God and do good things. I need a witness in this place tonight. Hallelujah. controlled by the spirit of fear but you are controlled by the spirit of the power love and a sound mind and God's got your back okay God's not taken off God with what's happening in 2020 the national coronavirus command council has decided to enforce a nationwide lockdown CRC is a move of God. There are many churches in this country. They are a move of God. So come on, Christian. Stop talking about what you are experiencing and what's happening in the world and become part of the church of Jesus, an unstoppable force that will change society, that will reform society, that will break down the middle wall of petition. This is what God plans through the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The greatest institution, the greatest organism, the greatest organization, the greatest college, the greatest hospital, the greatest care center, the greatest motivation center, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Heaven on earth. Good morning family. Come on there, right there where you are in your homes this morning. We want to welcome you on behalf of Pastor Pastor Sharon and Pastor Aiden this morning. We are going to have a blessed time in the house of Jesus this morning. Come on, we, we're going to praise the name of Jesus. Hey!
family this morning as we go into worship. We're going to have pastors and leaders on our online platforms. We want to connect with you. And we want to ask you this morning, if there's anything that you are praying for, anything that you are trusting God for, we want to connect with you. So send us an email, connect with us. Whatever you need to do this morning, we want to pray with you and believe that God can change your situation. Amen. far away from home when my scars ran deep and I was all alone when I filled this void with things that took my soul and you were there when darkness took a hold of my heart when fear gripped my soul and tore it apart When life became too much and fell too high And you were there Searching, never giving up on me Looking at my heart relentlessly Saying I am here, here to set you free And I sing of all your goodness I sing of all you've done There's a way I would have made it If it wasn't for your love When I find myself surrounded I praise you without to know that you are here You were there Ascending in the fire 
Your perfect love casts out all our fears And your comfort floods our hearts when you draw near
spirit this morning. We'll praise you, Jesus. Of your hands this morning, one more time. Facebook and on YouTube. I pray that God's going to speak to you through the cameras today into your homes. May God speak specifically to specifics this morning. So come on, lift up your hands all over this place. Father, we thank you this morning for your presence. We thank you for the privilege, Father, to be able to lift up holy hands to come and worship you, a living God. We haven't come to seek a man. We've come to seek you this morning. I pray you'll speak, Father, as you do through your word, through your son, through your Holy Spirit. I pray you'll speak this morning to every person's situation every person's heart, every person's life, every person's now. I pray you'll speak into us, Father. And you'll show us that you are still a good God, that our tomorrow is better than our today. Because you know the plans you think towards us. So we give you all the honor, all the praise, all the glory that is due to you today in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, those that believe it, those that pray it, lift up your voices one more time and give Jesus a shout of praise. I will praise you. Come on, lift up your voices. Let the shackles of doubt and fear fall off you a little bit. Come on. Tell him, I will praise you. Somebody next to you, greet the person next to you via WhatsApp this morning. I see we social distancing. So uh, greet the person with an elbow, uh, poke the person, double poke the person. I'm not sure what you do these days. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, just greet the brother and sister next to you. Great to have you in the house this morning. Welcome to you. Glad you took the time to be in church today. And I want to conclude our series this morning. And uh, if you are visiting us for the first time online today, visiting us in Cape Town or uh, in YouTube, on YouTube somewhere, you're watching us for the first time. Welcome to you. Come on, put your hands together and let's welcome every first time visiting the house this morning. Come on, Cape Town. Make everybody feel special this morning that are visiting us for the first time. I want to include our series, uh, Vision, Value and Victory. I hope that you are have apply, able to apply something in this series. And I, I hope that you've written your vision down. I hope you've taken some uh, thought about what I've been saying the last while because the Bible says without vision, people perish. And I hope that you're working on your value component, that you're busy sharpening your axe so that when you are out there in the marketplace, you know more because God is, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you, but you need to do the seeking and the knocking and the asking. Can you say amen? And this morning I want to conclude with victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, the Bible says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I think we need to say a big amen to that this morning. Thank God that we can have victory through Jesus our Lord. Amen. That word victory in the, in the Greek, it means a, a Nike or Nike as the world uh, has used it for economical purposes. But it means a conquest that leads to a triumph over something. So the word Nike, a conquest that leads us to a triumph over something. So the Bible is very clear. 
But thanks be to God who gives us a conquest. I think it goes without a saying we've had a bit of a conquest this year. We've had a bit of a challenge this year. But the Bible says we thank God because we are going to triumph over that conquest. We are going to come out the other side victorious. Why? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you say amen this morning? So we need to thank God for the ability to triumph over. That's what the Bible says. Although we have vision, although we have value, the Bible says sometimes we've got persecution or there's pressure or there's a bit of pushback on the the dreams, the desires we have. But the Bible says we have to thank God every day because we do come out victorious. By the way, the end of the last chapter is we win. Amen. That's the good news this morning. You might be in chapter 14, 15, 16 of a 30 chapter novel, but guess what? You win. Amen. We win. We win all the time. Why? Because Jesus Christ gave us victory. And that's the good news that the world doesn't have. That's our job. Not to condemn the world, but to tell the world, hey, come and join us. I've got some good news for you. That you can overcome every battle you're facing through Jesus our Lord. Can you say amen this morning? But the last part of that verse is this. It says, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible doesn't say God gives us victory through politics. Can you say a big amen to that? Thank God we don't have victory through politicians. Amen. We don't have victory through a vote. Did you know that? That's the great news. I'm not against democracy, but I'm saying thank God we don't choose, we don't get to choose our victory or our loss through a vote. Amen. Because God, the Bible says, voted 2,000 years ago and He gave us Jesus Christ. So we are always going to win. Can you say amen? We have, the Bible doesn't say we have victory through sport or we have victory through the economy. I mean, people say sport unites. Yes, it does until some human gets involved. Then it changes the rules again. Amen. Until the, 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 the management changes, until the, whatever the rules change, then everything is there. And I'm not saying a, a sport doesn't bring a certain form of unity. It does. But the Bible doesn't say victory comes through sport. The Bible doesn't say victory comes through the economy. So if the economy is up or the economy is down, that's why the, the economy, our, our, our money is called a currency. Because it's, it's like current. It, it fluctuates. It's up today, down tomorrow. It moves. But you can't get moved by the currency. Amen. We have to get moved by the presence of God. Can you say amen this morning? So the Bible said God gives us victory through Jesus Christ. So He says, I am the door. So if you've got a natural vision like we've spoken about, you've written your vision down. The Bible doesn't ask us to have a vision outside of Jesus Christ. You can have value. You can be a a super duper clever person. You can have more brain cells than most people. You can have more degrees than a thermometer. You can have a lot of value. But the Bible never says God intended for you to have that vision of value by yourself. The Bible says you have to be able to take your vision that you wrote down and your value that you wrote down or that you have. And if you take it through Christ, what does it look like on this side? Because the Bible said victory comes through Christ. I am the door. And the sheep hear my voice and they follow me through the door. The Bible says many people want to go to heaven, but they want to climb over the wall. But you can't. You have to come through the door. Through Christ. It's through Christ we have the victory. Through no other way. It's not through any other way you can have victory. You can have a great vision. You can have it written down. But if you're not going to take your vision through Christ, if your vision is not going to build the purpose of Christ, it's going to be a vision that is going to be dependent upon the world systems. And that's not what God's intended for us. Can you say amen? So your vision needs to be altered or changed. Ask yourself the question, does that vision populate, build, advance the kingdom of God? That's a vision that's come through Christ. In the Bible, you'll read in the Old Testament, many things were were said in the Old Testament. And if you take them through the cross, some of them stay on this side. They disappear in the Old Testament. Other things, they, they stay unchanged through the cross. And other things come through this side and they appear again in the New Testament. So your vision is the same. Your value. Sometimes our values have to change. We have to renew our minds. What we thought was important to us before Christ, when we bring it through Christ, our values change. Because very often, when you look at something, and that's the quest of your salvation, is to get to know. Paul said, I want to know Him. Because that's the, the challenge we face as, many Christ, as Christians today in the modern world with technology. Many people think that they understand their salvation but they are watching or listening or making decisions through the lens of technology or the lens of perception. So sometimes when you get born again and you this side of your salvation or before you're born again, you are, you are raised a certain way, you had a certain ideology, certain philosophies, you have certain thought patterns, certain beliefs. But then when you bring it through Christ on this side, the Bible says we have to filter everything through Christ, through Christ, through the cross. And some of the stuff that we even believe, I mean, when it comes to, to race or it comes to finance or it comes to, to mindset or it comes to many things, I mean, cultural perspectives, very often you have to filter everything through Christ. You have to look at it now from the gospel's perspective. And that's not always easy. 
That's why Jesus says sometimes people hate you for your belief because you start to put things down that are dear to your bloodline, but now the blood of Christ is changing that perspective. Can you say amen? Are you here this morning? So we need to understand having a vision and having value, but you don't take it through Christ, it's pointless, it's self-centered, it's selfish. We can't have a vision like the world has. The Bible said, what does it help you gain the whole world? But you end up losing your purpose, losing your soul. Can you say amen this morning? So God gives us victory through Jesus Christ. I mean, it's like when you were at school. I mean, when you were at school, you, 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 you were able to get a matric result. Let's, just, let's let me use that analogy this morning. If you were at school and you were, your, your vision was to matriculate, your value was I had to write the exam, I had to study, I had to uh, work, put in the hours to pass. But the reality is, if it wasn't for your parents who paid for your school fees, you would never be able to fulfill that vision. It was through your parents that you were able to matriculate, ultimately. So it's through Christ. He paid the price for us. So sometimes what the enemy's greatest job is, or the enemy's greatest attack against Christianity is, he wants you to, once you are born again, you're this side, you're unsaved. Now you come through Christ and you're on this side. But he now wants you on this side of your salvation to believe you still have to fight for your victory. But we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. Because the Bible said, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Christ. If you're in Christ on this side, all you have to do is you just have to arrive at school. You have to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to go and do business again as a businessman. How the, 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 the story is going to play out is not my responsibility. My responsibility is to study my textbook for my exam. I don't have to worry where the school fees is coming from because guess what? It's through my parents that are paying the price that I'm able to be educated. I mean, you don't just fall out and go to the mall and you fall into a degree. Somebody had to pay for you to go to university. Your job was to learn hard, was to fulfill the vision that you might have. I want to become a doctor. But the, 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 the grind, the payments of your university fees came through your parents. And that's what the Bible says when you understand, when you, when you give God the, 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 the glory and the praise, because through Christ we operate on a daily basis. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. Pastor, my business was affected through lockdown. Well, I want to tell you this morning, wake up tomorrow morning and go back to work again. And all you do is you declare the name of Jesus. Guess what? Because why? That name, Jesus, it gives us victory. So we have the victory. We might not be sure how the victory is going to come. But when we've gone through Christ... We're on this side. The Bible says, now we thank God every day. Father, I thank you today for a great day in business. I thank you for new clients. I thank you for restoration. I thank you for reconciliation. I thank you, Father, for we are going to recover all. Why? Because I'm in Christ. I've gone through the door of salvation. I'm on this side. And we thank God for the victory. He will send the victory. But the minute we start to lose our way on this side and we start to think like the world again, the Bible said, how did you start out there? Now you're back here. You're back in yourself. You're worrying about your tomorrow, what you eat or drink. Pastor, but don't you worry. Of course I worry. I'm a human. But, then the, but I have to remind myself in the worry that there is someone who gave me victory. Amen. Are you here this morning? So the Bible says what? That we have the victory through Jesus Christ. You didn't have the victory by yourself. You see, that's why Paul writes this to the Philippians in Philippians 4.19. He says this, with the, and the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from His glorious riches, which He has given to us in Christ. So the Bible says, when God supplies your need, He supplies it from His riches. So we are saved for Christ, in Christ, and through Christ. But guess what? We are are fighting from victory. He's already overcome. And what we have to do is we have to understand our authority in Christ. We have to understand that we have a name. We are allowed to use the name of Christ, the name of Jesus, the name that is greater than any other name. But very often Christians don't understand their authority in Christ. I mean, if you, you, if you pull rank, they always say you pull rank. I mean, you, you have people, you know somebody, you know somebody, you know somebody. Oh, I'm the son of this, or I'm the daughter of that. You can pull rank. It gives you access to places. If you go to a place and you can't get into a, into a certain place, but you know somebody in government, or you know somebody in a high place, or some wealthy person, or whatever, you say, oh, I'm the son of this, or I'm the grandson of that. Oh, yes, sir, we know him. Come through, come through. You get access. And the Bible says the same with our Christianity. When you wake up in the morning, you've got access to the glorious riches of God in Christ Jesus through Christ. But you have to use the name. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. 
Woo! He says, I'm listening, my son. I'm listening. Because the Bible says we give thanks to God through Christ. It's through Christ. Everything revolves around Jesus. That's why you can't let your emotions run wild. You've got to bring your emotions under control, under subjection to your spirit, man. Can you say amen this morning? But the Bible says, Paul says, I'm not worried about my tomorrow because God has taken care of me and He will supply all your needs from His glorious riches. Amen. So this morning as we conclude the series, I want to talk a little bit about a few benefit reminders. Sometimes we can forget the benefits we have in Christ. Sometimes you have to remind yourself some of the benefits that you have as a child of God. There are certain benefits to being a Christian. Did you know that? I mean, in sales, they always say people buy benefits. So people, what's in it for me? Woof them. What's in it for me? Then, well, there are certain things that are in it for you as Christians. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't do what you're doing. I mean, the promise of heaven, that's a benefit. Everybody wants to go to heaven. The rich young ruler wanted to go to heaven. What must I do to go to heaven? Everybody wants to end in heaven, but they don't want to go through the door of Christ. Oh, are you saying Jesus is the only way to heaven? Yes, I'm saying that. What about every other religion? It's not true. Because if you look for every other religion's God or, or every other religion's so-called founder or follower or whatever, you'll find their bones in the grave. Our tomb is empty. Amen. Why? Because Paul said, I want to know Him in the fellowship of His suffering. So when I suffer, He suffered first. If I go through some setback or some challenge or 2020 lockdown, COVID, bad year, let's erase the year. Christ also suffered. But He didn't say, I want to know Him just in suffering. He said, I want to know Him also in the power of His resurrection. There is resurrection power in Christ. It's through Christ we can rise again. Oh yeah, this morning. It's through Christ we have victory. So your business will recover. Your business will resurrect. But you can't go to work in the morning trying to fight for victory. You have to stand on the authority of the one who's already given us victory. And you have to declare to your bank balance. You have to declare to your client base. You have to declare to your vehicles. Vehicles, signboard on the side of my truck door. Let them see you in Jesus' name. Oh, are you one of those name it, claim it, and frame it Christians? Yes, because we thank God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. It's through Christ and Christ alone. Amen. That we have victory. I am testament of this. We used to have a signboard before the days of light boards and those things. We used to have just a normal board with stickers on. Then I went to the municipality and I put up a signboard, a big signboard. Then everybody said, oh, if he can do it, I can. Eventually my signboard had 30 signboards around it. We used to pray in the morning, every Wednesday morning. Father, we thank you. We come to you today in Jesus' name. Now, I told you we, were, we had a cash flow problem. We had more cash going out than cash coming in. When the cash flows the wrong way, it's not nice. Amen. But he cut up his twofs. Does he lack any? Amen. When, you, when, you, when the bank manager phones you to say you, 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 you overdraft is over, you overdraft. You said, I'll make a plan. I've got no plan because I, I, I've run out of plans. But God hasn't run out of plans. Now, I'm not saying you just got to claim it and God's going to pour money out of heaven. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is if you are going through a battle, through a challenge, you have the authority of God's word and, and, his, and his son's name. There is no other name under heaven by which on earth by which man can be saved but by the name of Jesus. In days gone by, God spoke to people through the prophets, but today He speaks to us by His Son. In Jesus' name, through Christ. So we used to stand on a Wednesday morning. Every Wednesday morning, we declared, Father, we thank You in Jesus' name. Then we took a certain department of our business. If it was repairs or it was sales or it was whatever, I was in the telephony game, in the cellular game. We were talking about airtime sales, repairs sales, contract sales, uh, cash sales, accessory sales. I used to make every one of my staff speak Jesus' name over a certain segment. Now, it doesn't make sense. Because the Bible said God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Because we want to go, I go to Harvard. I go to UCT or to Martis. I don't know what it is. No, sorry, there's Martis. Oxford. Okay, I go to Jesus. That's my, that's my access in. I don't need a matric exemption to get there. I just need to go through the door by faith. I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you will come through and open up, come in, I'll, I'll sup with you. I'll have a meal with you. I will now start to share my inheritance with you. 
I'll now start to pour wisdom into. I'll now start to give you revelation. I'll now give you stuff that not even universities can give you. I'm going to, you're going to be driving your car with a standard four and you, you never had the privilege to study. But when you have the revelation, when you have Christ in you, I'm going to put an idea into your mind that's going to catapult you into billionaire status. Why? Because I'm in you. And you are, you are wise enough to walk through the door to put your faith in me. It's in Christ that we have victory. So we started to declare that my next door neighbor, he would come in the mornings, we'd pray. Julia, Sulia, Mrubia, what mark it in mal means? Because the Bible says people think you're mad. Julia, Sulia, what is that? I don't know, but guess what? The Bible said the Holy Spirit was poured out through Christ. If Christ didn't come, the helper wouldn't come. So you're not all that powerful, by the way. You have power that's given to you, that's on loan to you. Why? Because Christ came. I won't leave you as orphans. I won't leave you alone. I'm going to send you a helper. But what you have to do is you have to access that through Jesus, through Christ. So we started to declare contract sales. Father, we thank you right now that this month is going to be a great month. The month of November, we're going to have record sales in Jesus' name. Jesus, give us wisdom. Jesus, make people look at the signboard. Jesus, make people walk through the door. Jesus, and I, we used to declare this every single Wednesday without fail for months. Every Wednesday was prayer. Seven to eight in the business. We started to, every place your foot shall tread. Our feet started to tread in that business. It was a place, it was on the wrong side of town. It, they, they, they built a new center, a new mall in our town. And uh, the, the opposition was in the, in the prime time position. When you walked into the main store, his store was there. He had all the feet. I had nothing. But I had Christ. <laughs> Woo. He didn't have Christ. He had feet. But I had the feet of the gospel. How blessed are the feet of the ones who bring good news. I used to say, Father, I thank you. I kid you not. Ask my wife. Ask her. She's living test me. She used to ask me where we're getting money from. I said, I haven't got a clue. So we started to declare Christ, Jesus. And guess what happened? Over time, not immediately, over time, God started to open doors, ideas, thoughts, opportunities, relationships. God shifts, God's moved. Because when you declare Jesus, the Bible says victory comes victory things on the earth let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so God sends Jesus down from heaven in the beginning John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God and nothing that was made was made outside of him so when God said let there be light Jesus was with him <laughs> that's why I said I'm the light of the world because he was with God when God declared light so it's not like he arrived 2,000 years ago for the first time. He's been here since the foundation of the world. But nothing that was made was made without him. So the mountains, the sky, this everything you see, it was made with Christ there. So when you as a Christian start to declare Christ on this earth in 2020, guess what happens? When you say light in Jesus' name, light comes. When you say provision, provision comes. Why? Because that is the victory that we have through Christ. Is it that easy, Pastor? Yes, it is. Is it going to be immediate? No. Because when you're pregnant, you don't give, uh, fall pregnant today and you give birth tomorrow. There's a process. There's always a time. Seed, time, harvest. Notice the Bible doesn't say seed, time, harvest, time. The Bible said seed, time, harvest. Harvest is victory. So there's no time when you have harvest. Harvest is we celebrate. Why? Because victories come. But we have to do our part. There's a seed. Christ, God so loved the world that He sent His seed. Christ. That's why today we have a thing called Christianity. Amen. Why? Because Christ's seed was sown. So when you start to sow the name of Jesus in your circumstance in 2020, you know what happens? Victory comes. Can you say amen this morning? Victory comes. Listen to what the Bible says. Here are a few reminders. That we have victory because we live under grace and truth. John 1, 17. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad for grace? Aren't you glad you have the grace of God? I mean, I'm glad I have the grace of God. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to hold this microphone today because I would be disqualified. Because none of us, the Bible said, all have sinned. Not some have sinned. 
Not you that are now unsaved, now you're saved and you haven't sinned in the last five, e- five years in the area that you used to sin. Now you think that makes you perfect. Now Paul said, if you want to play the law game and you want to try and keep the law like Moses uh, made you keep, he says and you break it in law nine, but you kept it from one to eight. He says you've got to go back to the start again. That's what the law does. Just when you think you've got it all together, you gossip and he says, all right, disqualified, back to one. It's like you're climbing this hamster wheel under the law. But he says, that's not what Christ came to do. Christ didn't come to put another law on you. He came to fulfill the law. So what the law could not do, grace and truth came through Christ. So grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Christ paid the price so you and I could have access to God. But it's through Christ and truth comes. Some of us have not got full truth on many areas. But if you abide in my word, you shall know the truth and the truth that you know from the word, not from a blog or from your Facebook page or from a politician, not from a political party's uh, uh, a pitch to vote me in as a president or not. Not that. That's man's things. But truth from the word, from heaven, from the source of life comes through Christ. And as a Christian, I would encourage the young Christian, don't get sucked into all these things. Don't let your emotions run away with you. Presidents will come and presidents will go. Viruses will come and viruses will go. Epidemics will come and epidemics will go. But my kingdom shall last. And you are in a kingdom. Amen. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. I thank God for His grace. The fact that we can wake up every morning and say, Father, I don't deserve to be blessed. I messed up yesterday, but despite of me even messing up, three times, Paul, I see some, some uh, religious organizations call him Saint Paul, Nochal. He called himself a sinner. He said, of all the sinners, I'm the greatest. But I see, we still call him Saint Paul. Like sometimes we like to call pastors, oh, Saint this and Saint that, and, and then you find out, oh, then the pastor falls, boom, and he lets you down. And I guess what, because flesh will let you down. I don't say every pastor, because one falls, everyone's going to fall. I say, but if a pastor does fall and a pastor does make a mistake and and a pastor's sin does come out, should it make you fall over? No, you should say, Father, thank you that by your grace I'm still standing. But let's pray for that man because there's a second chance for that man. That's grace. We don't write. We haven't got a cancel culture in the kingdom of God. We've got a conversion culture. Paul said, I'm in labor to see Christ formed in you because that brother made a mistake because leadership most likely stopped praying for him. And if your brother leaves the church through offense, it's because he hasn't discovered his full understanding of who Christ is. So he's still getting offended. So the Bible says, leave the 99 and go look for him. Don't discuss him on social media. And don't you get defensive over your flesh. So if somebody insults your pigment, don't defend your pigment because it's not Christ in your pigment. It's Christ in your spirit. The Bible says, for the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The love of God's poured out into your heart, not onto your flesh. So stop defending your flesh. If people don't like your flesh, they didn't like Christ's flesh, they hung it on a cross. He said, but you have to understand why you do what you do. You don't serve Christ through the lens of politicians. You don't serve Christ through the lens of your culture, your color. You don't serve Christ through the lens of your social standing. You don't serve Christ through a poverty mindset. You don't serve Christ through a wealthy mindset. You serve Christ, what? Through the lens of God, through the lens that God sees Him at. What? He's the only begotten Son, the one who came to give His blood for you and me. But the love of God is poured out into our hearts. Not the wrath of God, not the anger of God, not the opinion of man. The love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you here this morning? Because sometimes we get so uh, defensive of, of, of your pigment. And guess what? Don't let your pigment. Uh, I mean, Pastor, any words used to say in Kimberley, he said, if you slap a corpse, it shouldn't respond. Because Paul said, I die daily. He said, it's no longer I that live. So if you go to the mortuary and you slap a corpse and it responds, it's still alive. Unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies. But Pastor, not but. Don't become a bully goat Christian. But, but, but my harki. I've got an issue. Well, I'm, when every time I go to God with an issue, He gives me a tissue. He says, he has, an issue for, he has a tissue for your issue. Get over yourself, Aiden. Why are you coming to me to, 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 to pray to lightning bolt your, your neighbor? I'm, I died for your neighbor and I died for you. Before you came to me to ask me to have retribution on your neighbor, what are you thinking? Why would I even do that? I gave my life so every man can have a chance. 
The fact that you don't get on with your neighbor is your own issue. Get over your issue. Humble yourself. Lay yourself down. Pass it. Sounds easy. It's hard. Because I've got a, a harki. And sometimes I can get a farki in my harki. Amen. But pastor, I'm leaving the church. Why? The church isn't yours to leave. Because it's not my church. It's not it's his church. We just share, we're just stewards of his church. So if you leave the church, then you're telling me you're leaving Christ. Because it's his wife. Well, go have your have your discussion with Jesus there in your inner room. Go tell him you're leaving his wife. Tell him you're divorcing his wife. Tell him. Tell him. Let's see what he says. That's why I won't, I can't leave the church. Because I'm married to his wife and I've got, I've got a wife and she's expensive. Amen. <laughs> I often tell my wife, honey, our credit card limit, it's a budget, not a target. Amen. But where does issues come from? God, your heart above all else. It's a victory. Victory comes where? Through Christ. When is the last time you studied Christ's nature? When's the last time you read the Gospels, the Epistles, and you actually discovered Christ? Paul the Apostle said, he said, he said, he said I want to know Him. I don't want to know my Judaism. I sat at the feet of Gamaliel. I went to the top universities of my time. I was a, I was a, a, a Hebrew of all Hebrews. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I kept all the laws, all the rituals, all the requirements. of God. I kept them all. He said, but when I discovered Christ, the unsearchable riches. Do you know what unsearchable riches mean? It means there's so much stuff in Christ that you don't even know is there yet. But you're seeking and you're searching on Google. Google search. But when's the last time you had God search? And you didn't search God, the universal God, all roads lead to heaven. No, it's through Christ we search. Paul said, I seek God through Christ. I want to know Him. I consider my whole life, everything I've known up until this point, everything I thought. He was a hater of Christians. He was a persecutor of the church. That guy that hates the church, he's most likely the next Saul that's going to become Paul. Don't write off that radical politician that hates the church. Pray for him. Because when he gets saved, his influence is huge like Paul's was huge. God never cancelled Saul. He converted Saul. When a guy is strong, he's seeing his world through a lens. But we have to see your life through the lens of Christ. I want to know him. Jesus, reveal yourself to me more. And when the revelation of Christ comes, the filters of your perspective and your viewpoints change. You're allowed to say you're sorry. You're allowed to say you thought a certain way, now you think differently. Paul said it. He said, I consider everything rubbish, but to know Him. Dung. Sometimes we hold on to things. Oh yeah, this morning. We have to understand, victory doesn't come the way we think it's going to come. You can have a great vision, a great business idea. I mean, this building, in 100 years from now, there might be something else standing here because someone's going to, and we're not going to be here, and we've got no authority to stop them. So you can't win at Christianity. It's not a fight we're trying to fight on the earth. You can't win like a 15-round boxing match. All you do is you make an impact for Christianity on, this, on the earth because we're so journeying through. So our job is to, is to take as many people as we can with us so the reason people don't invite people to church or the reason, reason people stop evangelizing is because their focus of who Christ is has become filtered through everything else. So if you're in the mall or you're in a shop and somebody, you see something, you should say, that person is going to go to hell and I've got the, that, that's the closest that person's going to come to heaven is through me. Jesus said so in Luke. He said to the disciples, he said, go into, into, a, into a home, knock on the door. If they open up, find the man of peace. He said, if they, if they open up, he says, start a home sale there. That's why we have home cells. We build the church according to the Bible. Because you look for the man of peace, the person who says, I believe Jesus is now start. He says, start a home cell there. And the more you start home cells, the more we can infiltrate the whole city. If we have 20,000 home cells in Cape Town, guess what happens? Everything changes. Because in those home cells, there are politicians, there's businessmen, there's people, and we're starting to what? preach the gospel to them and when we preach the gospel to them guess what happens they start to change they start to understand Christ they start to lay things down people put policies in place because they don't know Christ 
So our job is not to condemn the brother. Our job is to convert the brother. How? Through the preaching of Christ. It's through Christ that you can go to heaven. It's through Christ you can find purpose. It's through Christ you can find peace. It's through Christ you can find salvation. It's through Christ you can go to heaven. It's through Christ you have an inheritance. It's through Christ you can have peace with God. It's only through Christ. Are you here this morning? So we're able to give glory to God because of Christ. Romans 16, 27. The Bible says, To God alone wise. Be glory through Jesus Christ. The reason people can't lift their hands above their shoulders and go, Jesus, Father, we worship you. The reason they can't do that because they haven't come through Christ. Amen. We're able to be comforted by God. Listen to what your Bible says, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 5. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with His comfort through Christ. So we're going to be comforted if you've gone through some trial or tribulation or some pain or you've lost someone or something. The Bible says we're able to be comforted through Christ. Amen. We're able to trust God again. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 4. And we have such trust through Christ towards God. We have such trust. Sometimes people lose their trust in God. Why? Because they've gone through some stuff. The Bible says we have such trust through Christ towards God. Put your trust back in God, I ask you this morning. Put your trust back in His promises. Put your trust back in His Word. Start to speak the name of Jesus over your vision. Start to speak the name of Jesus over your talent. Father, You gave me this gift. Let this gift glorify You. Let this gift be used for Your glory, for Your name. Father, when I do something well, when people sing my praises, let me say thank You, but let me push the glory back to You because it's only through You that I live and I move and I have my being. In You I live. In You I move. In You I have my being. I am who I am. Because of you. Amen. Bible says this, we're able to walk in abundance. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. That's why you can speak about recovery. Why? Because the Bible says you can. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor that you through His poverty might become rich. Pastor, I think He's talking about spiritual wealth. Great. Well, then you hold on to your spiritual wealth. But the Greek meaning of that word rich is pluteo, which means to be rich, to have an abundance of outward possessions. So you know why they gambled for Jesus' clothing? Because he wore purple. Purple was a very sought after color. Amen. Because Christ had a treasurer. Judas became a betrayer because he started to steal the money because that's how he was moved by the amount of money Jesus had. So it's not all about the money, but God wants you to be blessed. The Bible says part of your, part of your, your inheritance in Christ is that you can operate in this world system without money having you, but you can have money. So stop trying to always justify it or spiritualize it all. If, they, if, if Christ's clothes were worth this, they would never have gambled for it. Amen. Judas didn't become a betrayer because he betrayed Jesus through uh, friendship. He betrayed him through money, 30 pieces of silver, the the greed of man. So don't let money, don't run after money and lose your salvation. I want to say this to us this morning. But guess what? You can stand on the Word of God. Father, thank you. You became poor, therefore I can become rich. And I'm rich for purpose. I'm rich so I can build your church. I'm rich so I can advance your kingdom. I'm rich so we can eradicate poverty. I'm rich so I can help somebody build a house. I'm rich so I can buy somebody else a car. I'm rich for a blessing. I'm rich for a purpose. Amen. But it's through you that I can claim that. We are, we are in victory because we can do more because Christ strengthens us. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Your strength comes from Christ. Your strength does not come from vitamin C. Amen. It does come from vitamin C, H-R-I-S-T. Vitamin Christ, not vitamin C. That gives you a temporary boost. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Pastor, I don't know what to do. Well, you can do all things through Christ. Go back to Christ. Shut the, 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 the door of your room. Go into your room. Put everything off. Put your phone on airplane mode. Shut, the, shut everything off and just start to say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Cry out to Him, Jesus. And if you cry out to Him, the Bible says He hears. Because there is no other name under heaven on the earth by which man can be saved but by the name of Jesus. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit because of, we have victory because of the Holy Spirit. Titus 3.6, He generously poured out His Spirit upon us through Jesus our Savior. Listen. We can live a life of sacrifice. 1 Peter 2, 5. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ. People are selfish. People can't serve in the house of God if they haven't come through Christ. 
It's because of Christ that we all sit here with white shirts and red shirts and cameramen and sound people and pastors and we sit here. It's because Christ has come into your heart and because that we're willing to sacrifice. We pay tithes and offerings which are sacrificial financially because Christ came into us. Oh yeah, this morning. So we look forward to an eternal inheritance. Galatians 4 verse 7. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but you are a son. And if you are a son, then you are an heir of God through Christ. That means you have an inheritance to look forward to. There is a, there is a mansion for you in heaven. Pastor, pastor, just read your Bible. It's in there. I haven't got time to tell you that. It's there. Amen. The Bible says, and finally, in closing, we can obtain salvation through Christ. Listen, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Listen. For God did not appoint us to anger. For God did not appoint us to judge us and to write us off and to cancel us. No, He says, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's through Christ that we have salvation. So my question to you in closing this morning, stand on your feet with me if you will all over this place. Amen. It's through Christ. It's through Christ. Lift your hands if you will for a few moments. Just there we, right there we are. Right there we are. Just call on the name of Jesus for a few moments. Not being flaky or being... Uh, emotional, just stand there and start to call on that name. Just there we are, whatever situation you're facing this morning, whatever circumstance you might be facing, whatever it is you're going through this morning, you just stand there and you tell, tell Jesus this morning, say, Jesus, <laughs> come into my situation. I declare you again. I, I, I repent. I ask you to forgive me. I'm sorry that I've, I've cut you out. I'm sorry that I'm trying to go through everything else. I'm trying to go through the bank. I'm trying to go through my parents and I'm trying to go through my emotions and I'm trying to go through the, the government or I'm trying to go through anger. I'm trying to go through all these things. I need to go through you, Jesus. Here I am, Father. Here I am, Lord. Come on, just lift your hands right there where you are. Just tell Him, Jesus, Jesus, come. Bring peace. Bring peace. Bring wisdom. Bring revelation. Silence the anxiety in my heart. Silence it. If you put something else in front of Him, come on. There's nothing, nothing but the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's right there we are. It's a few moments. There's a great presence of God all over this place. Jesus. Peace, Father, peace. It surpasses human understanding. It's through Christ you're going to recover all. I want to quit, Pastor. I know. That's how you feel. Your flesh feels. Go back to Him. It's through Christ you're going to gain victory. It's through Christ you're going to recover all. It's through Christ we're going to build that vision. It's through Christ we're going to apply our value and not take the glory for ourselves. It's through Christ we're going to stay humble. It's through Christ we're going to live sacrificial lives. It's through Christ we're going to end in heaven. It's through Christ we're going to do great things with our lives. It's through Christ. Thank Him. Just thank Him this morning. Father, we thank You this morning. That we have the victory because of Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. Just thank Him this morning. Come on, right there we are. Sometimes we, we're so busy trying to recover, we're not even thankful. Just be thankful this morning. Thank Him for your, your ministry. Thank Him for your gift. Thank Him for your life. Thank Him for the fact that you are still alive today. And because you're alive, He's not finished with you yet. A lot of people have gone this year to be with the Lord. 2020, it's a year that they will never see 2021. You're still here. And while you're still here, God has still got a plan with your life. Every head about every eye closed this morning. You're standing, you're watching me there on YouTube, Facebook. You're saying, Pastor, I've never made a decision to accept Jesus into my heart. Maybe you've never obtained salvation through Christ. You're like me. I used to go to church. I was confirmed in my church. I did all the things that the system told me, but I never went through Christ. I went through a system. Until 31st of May, 1992, I went through the door of Christ. And I said, Father, I believe in your son. And I accepted Jesus into my heart. Simple. Never knew I'd become a pastor. Never knew I'd be in Cape Town. Never knew I'd do all these things. God knew. But I had to do my part. I had to say yes. Maybe that's you today. You're saying, Pastor, I feel far from God. I feel empty inside. I feel like I need a fresh start, a new beginning. Maybe in this building today, every head, but every eye closed. You say to me, Pastor, that's me. I feel far from God. I feel distant from God this morning. I want to say to you this morning, man, you have a Father who loves you very much. He loves you so much that He sent us Jesus. If you were the only person alive on planet Earth today, He would die just for you. But don't run from God this morning. Run to Him. I want to ask you. I'm going to ask you for the sake of the time of the year we find ourselves we're not calling people forward but i'm gonna ask you right there you, when you, you stand in your, in your seat you're saying pastor it's me i want to change my life i want to accept christ i want to walk through this door this morning maybe you're religious like i was you went to church you read your bible even never made sense because you never accepted christ into your heart you have to be born again you must be born again what does it mean when you confess with your mouth yes jesus and you believe in your heart that jesus is the son of god and you, you say that with 
with your mouth, the Bible says you are saved. Perhaps it's you today. You stand on the platform and it's a vulgar mouth. I don't know what it is, Pastor. It's a stirring in my heart. I don't know what it is. But I want this peace to come. It's through Christ we have victory. It's through Christ we go to heaven. It's through Christ we have everything that we have. But God is waiting on the other side of your, of your yes, of your decision. So that's you online. They're in the building this morning. You're saying, yes, Pastor. Include me in your prayer. Like I said, I'm not going to call you forward, but I want to ask you, invite you. You're saying, that's me. If that's you, quickly, quietly, you're saying, include me in your prayer, Pastor. Just slip up your hand above your shoulder so I can pray with you this morning and we can close off the service. Come on, just slip up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Lift it up above your shoulder. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up, come on, many hands going up. Just lift up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Right there we are, man. Come on. It's free. It's the only thing that's free. It's salvation. He paid the price. You don't have to give your own blood. Just say yes. Just send it yeah. Send it yeah on the balcony. Lift your hand. If that's you, thank you. Come on, there's a great presence of God in this place. I wish I didn't have to leave right now, but I want to close off the service. Quickly, lift it up. Yes, yes, yes. Put your hands down this morning. Pray this with me. If you're online, you pray that prayer. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you've been raised from the dead. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you pray that prayer this morning. Put your hands together. Give him a shout of praise all over this place. Amen. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Declare that name. Amen. Your homework this week, shout that name. Morning, noon, and night. Shout it over your business. Go to work tomorrow, and when you walk through your door, just start screaming, Jesus. You'll make the neighbors go mull. But guess what? Heaven stands at attention. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to receive the offering in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, while we give, um, while we take a seat, come on, I think we just need to give a round of applause for that message, a shout of praise. I mean, we are fighting from victory. We are living for Christ from victory. It's such an honor and such a blessing. Um, we are so privileged to be in this vision that we are in, in this church that we are in. Um, I mean, is that not so? So I, don't, I just want to read something to us this morning. But before I do that, you know, do you know that scientifically it is proven that when you give to somebody, when you could have used that money on yourself, that people are actually happier? <laughs> so in Scripture it says, in Acts 20, it says that it, it is better to give than it is to receive. And science actually proves that, that people who give are happier, happier people. I mean, isn't that, isn't that so powerful in Scripture? <laughs> we are happier because we give. And then this morning we're going to give cheerfully from a place of victory to the purpose and the, and the house of God. When you come into the services, people get saved. We have so many initiatives that, that, that are taking place at the moment, but this service happens because of people's generosity to God's purpose. So we can give outside, we can go today, I hope one of us give maybe some soup or some warm food to somebody outside, or we have um, packages that we give out to people, food packages. There's so many initiatives that we do within CRC Cares, within the church, but it is good to give, but how much better to give into the purpose of God. And this morning, we're not going to give from a place of lack and a mindset of lack. We're not going to give from our lack, but we're going to give whatever that seed is from a place of victory. We're going to sow from a place of victory. We're going to give our seed knowing that we are already positioned in heavenly places with Christ and we can give from that place this morning. Amen. So we're going to give. I want to encourage us. We have a... Um, a shopping basket drive. So basically we have a drive with CRC Cares. It's our last one for the year. Encourage all of us on the 28th of November, let's come out. Um, if you can't make it on that day, let's really give towards CRC Cares initiative and let's be generous because we are. God has called us to be happy, generous people in Jesus' name. And then a friendly reminder, tomorrow evening, Pastor Aiden is having a leaders meeting. Um, so we encourage everybody, if you serve in the house, if you if you are in an involved member, amen, um, who will reach spiritual maturity because involved members reach spiritual maturity, come out tomorrow night for Pastor Aiden's leaders meeting. It's gonna be great. The band is gonna close off with an anointed item, but while we do, just before we do that, we're just gonna pray. So Father, for every generous, cheerful giver in the house, we pray a blessing that is superseding their expectations. Thank you for people who stand in position positions of victory because God you have placed them there thank you that you will pour out a blessing of which they cannot contain in their lives in the name of Jesus thank you be blessed amen 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 enjoy this anointed item
come on, Stefan. It's about to be a dad soon. We're so blessed in the house with incredible talent. What an amazing band that we have. Come on, church. Let's go out this week. Let's make a difference in our world. Let's go invite our world. And please bless somebody today. Come on and join us this evening at 6 p.m. Invite a friend. Enjoy your Sunday afternoon and be blessed. <laughs>